Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, this is just a quick video to walk you through a recent concept uh, I've been developing, uh, thinking a lot about. The last video uh, I uploaded yesterday <laughs> uh, was about kind of how, let's say, connectum specific harmonic waves or geometric eigenmodes, however you end up quantifying them, correspond to phenomenology. You know, in what way the low frequency resonant modes in your body and brain correspond to different states of consciousness. Well, I'm going to say something a little bit more advanced than that because I'm hypothesizing that the resonant modes are electric oscillations. You're kind of dividing the nervous system and you're having a weighted sum of electric oscillations. And then, well, that will affect the electromagnetic field. Now, if you take seriously electromagnetic theories of consciousness, then the shape of the electromagnetic field as a consequence of these oscillations will tell you a lot about the phenomenology <laughs> of the experience. So I've been trying to simulate this in a number of ways. Um, I'm just going to show you one example. Uh, and there's so much more to talk about, but you know, this is just to get started. This, uh, you can see <laughs> amplitude, frequency, and phase of harmonics. Uh, it's a, a processing script uh, I wrote some time ago, like a couple of weeks ago. I'm just going to quickly describe what this is, but then kind of like try to sell you on the idea that there's a lot of promise in here. Uh, okay, so I'm just partitioning this square into various lattices where effectively you know each of these levers in the bottom in the left uh, modulates the amplitude of electric oscillations for different harmonics of this plate i mean it's kind of the cialdini plate you know you put sand on it it's a metallic plate you make it vibrate at a specific frequency and you get the emergent resonant modes all the ways in which waves can fit an integer number of times uh, in the plate. Now, this is, these are approximate, you know, this is not actually the eigenmodes. This is using kind of a discrete cosine transform, but it's approximately correct. Now, the thing that I'm visualizing here is you start with a lattice of points and then you look at where the electric gradient is, right? So right now the plate is going up and down and up and down in terms of electric potential. Okay. When it's positive, all the points in the lattice will be converging in the center, right? Uh, because that's where is, you know, that is the gradient. Whereas when it's negative, they're going to be moving away from it. Now, because you're just showing the gradient, you don't actually know the amplitude. I'm not visualizing that here, at least for simplicity. There's other simulations I've done where I, I do add the amplitude. But where this gets interesting is when you combine multiple resonant modes together. Now, it's not that interesting right now, right? Because I'm just combining the first two. But because they're happening at the same phase and frequency, it still just kind of like alternates in a discrete way. But okay, let's dephase them a little bit. Ooh, here is where it gets relevant for phenomenology. <laughs> yeah, I mean, imagine if, if your control capability for attention is weighted sums of electric resonant modes, the way in which that will affect the electric field lines will be non-trivial, but it, it actually depends on the details of phase and frequency. Um, I can also, for example, like modulate the relative uh, temporal frequency of these two um, oscillators. And you start seeing kind of like, yeah, things that look more like chaotic dynamics. Okay, so here is the pitch. Here's the thing I want to communicate in this video primarily. Think about how difficult it actually is to concentrate your attention in meditation, right? It's like you're, you're trying to focus in a center of your vision. For example, you know, in, you know, focused attention meditation. And you try to do it and you try to do it, but the attention kind of like uh, leaks in strange ways. And sometimes all of a sudden you're paying attention to the periphery, like the opposite of what you wanted. Very often though, attention will kind of like have like strange artifacts where it becomes a line 
or becomes like kind of this uh, set of cusps or a pinwheel, right? I am going to suggest those are the natural kind of like artifacts that come from just not getting the weighted sum of the harmonics exactly right. So, you know, to a first approximation on a moment to moment basis, you're kind of like, you know, hammering these harmonics. It's a, a dampened, you know, harmonic resonance. And, you know, you can habituate to any one of them. So you need to keep banging them and, and do it at the right time, the right, you know, phase with the right level of energy, such that all of them together give you kind of like this like stable mode of attention where let's say you're concentrating all of your attention in one point and you're able to keep it there. Now, I'm not going to be able to, you know, tune into such a stable configuration from these two, right? Because these are kind of like steady state harmonics. I'm not, they're not damped, at least in this particular case. And also it does require a lot of fine tuning, you know, so it, <laughs> we would have to actually lock out. I, I, I would need to know exactly how to do it. And uh, I don't, I don't exactly know how to do it in this tool, but you know, next steps for this is yeah, to actually train a model where I use machine learning to figure out what is the appropriate sequence of weighted sums of harmonics in order to keep attention having a particular shape. And by that, I mean for the field lines to converge in a predictable, reliable, robust way, and then add perturbations to those resonant modes and see if the artifacts that you get, hey, the way in which attention is not quite converging in the way you want it, if that reflects the artifacts of attention in meditation. And I'm actually very hopeful that we're going to get like some interesting, you know, low hanging fruit results there. You know, the other thing I'm going to show you, and this is it for today. <laughs> There's a lot more I can share on this, but you know, for efficiency sake. Okay. So here, here, what I'm doing is actually visualizing the electromagnetic field. You see, um, you know, the, the, the color here is effectively just the electric field, but I am visualizing the field lines of both the magnetic and the electric field. Uh, and I can, for example, make the field lines larger or smaller. I can change, you know, the sampling, you know, how many field lines I, I, I use and so on. And of course, yeah, I can modulate the relative velocity, you, you know, the, the, the temporal frequency of these harmonics. I find that playing with this tool, so many of the things that I arrive at here are very evocative of different attentional mode in meditation. And uh, I don't know, it's very compelling, especially if I speed it up. Um, there's some effects that are like, wow, I, th I'm, I feel like I've experienced that on, you know, the third jhana or the fourth jhana. Lots of interesting things happen. So I actually think, you know, the evolution of this might also become a very powerful cyberdelic technology. Why? Because it's, okay, let's say you cannot focus in just one point or kind of spread evenly your attention because that's very difficult, but maybe you can do something close by you know, kind of like maybe concentrating nine clusters in a circle or something like that. Well, then if you can do that, we can find the weighted sum of harmonics of electric field oscillatory harmonics, and then sort of like slowly phase lock you into those and then slowly pull you towards one of these very consonant, beautiful, high frequency, you know, whole or rather actually full spectrum coherent state. Um, I'm going to say that, you know, a fascinating thing that I've been playing with here is that I can also modulate the average harmony of this. Right now, it's in a more disharmonious configuration where whenever it finds kind of harmonic resonance, it kind of tries to move a little bit faster. <laughs> Whereas if these levers all the way to the right, then actually whenever you find harmonic resonance, it either interlocks and you get kind of like a stronger coupling between the harmonics and you stay there for longer. You know, it might be subtle. When you play with these for hours, as I tend to do with the, the tools that I make, um, it becomes pretty obvious that like, hey, actually there's there's something here. You know, this like 
harmony modulation lever actually matters quite a bit. Um, might be related to valence. There's so much more to talk about this, but you know, it's an active area of research. I just figured I would share kind of this working progress in case it sparks anybody's imagination. And yeah, I'm going to be meditating a lot using a tool like this. Uh, yeah, not exactly this one, but an evolution of it. Well, with that, I'll talk to you on another day on another topic. Infinite Bliss, everybody. Take care.